right, so we're on a day two of final exam review for semester two here. Um, and uh, we're going to start working together problems. For 12 and 13, there's going to be uh, two working together problems. Um, again, you guys already have this stuff written out for you guys, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it says, working together, Dan and Steve can pick up 20 bushels of apples in five hours. Had he done it alone, it would have taken Steve nine hours. How long would it take Dan to do it? Okay, so there's a formula for this. Okay, the total time is equal to the product of both of their times divided by the sum of both of their times. Okay? And then based on what they give me, I plug it in, and then I solve for the missing variable, right? So we'll read this again. It says, Dan and Steve can pick up 20 bushels of apples in five hours. So together, it takes them five hours to do a job. Had he done it alone, it would have taken Steve nine hours. So let's say Steve is X, so nine. And they want us to figure out Dan, so we don't know what Dan is. So it's going to be nine Y, nine plus Y. Okay, at this point, you're going to do some multiplication. you got to try to get that denominator out of the way. So we're going to multiply this over. So it becomes five times nine plus Y is equal to nine Y. So we'll multiply it out on the left side. We get 45 plus 5y is equal to 9y. And uh, we'll subtract 5y over to the right side. So I get 45 is equal to 4y. So in order to solve for y, I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. So I get that y is equal to 45 divided by 4. Um, if we kind of do this, right, let's just kind of work this out. So 45 divided by 4, that's a 1. <coughs> I'll drop the 5, that's still a 1. So it's 11.25. Because 1 fourth is 0.25. So it's 11 with the remainder of 1 fourth. Um, so 11.25 uh, hours. Okay. And that's going to be our answer for that. 11.25. So 13 is the same thing. It's just going to be asking us for a total time. This one, they asked us for the time of one person. These are usually the harder ones. 13 is going to ask us for how long it takes them to work again. Okay. So it says make and sweep a warehouse in eight hours. Mark can do the same in six. How long would it take them to work together? So again, the formula stays the same, okay? The formula is not different. They want us to figure out the time it took together, so T is what I'm looking for. I do know X and Y. Let's say X is 8 and Y is 6, so it's going to be 8 times 6, 8 plus 6. So that's 48 over 14, okay? Okay. So, again, you guys will have your calculators. Let me just kind of bring mine out here. Sorry? 3.4 hours. 3.4 hours, thank you. So time equals to 3.4 hours. And that's it. So you can see these are much easier. The ones that don't require you to um, figure out a specific time, but, but the total time. Total time is easy. Right? And, and again, what I'm showing you right here is what is on the test. So, like, there will be one where you got to find specific time. There's going to be one where you got to find total time. Okay? So, there'll be both. Questions on those two? It's kind of related. All right. So, solve by factoring. X squared minus 5X plus 10 equals 6. So, notice we're kind of back to what we did yesterday, right? Yesterday, we did a lot of factoring. We only did one solving by factoring. Um, so here's another one that says solve by factor. Now, I told you guys yesterday that whenever you solve by factor, you got to make sure it's set equal to zero. So first thing I got to do is move this six over. So this will be x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to zero. Okay. At that point, I'm going to do the x method. Thankfully, my a term is a 1, so I don't have to divide. Not like yesterday, I was dividing every single time. So this time, my a value is 1. So I'll multiply a times c, that's going to be 4 and a negative 5 on the bottom. So I'm going to need to use two negatives here. 
negative 1, and negative 4. And those are going to be my two values I'm going to use for my factors. Again, I don't have to divide because a is 1. I mean, if you want to divide by 1, go ahead, but it doesn't change anything. That's why we don't divide when a equals 1, because dividing by 1 is, is pointless. Um, so, um, well, let me rephrase that. I guess as math gets harder, you can divide by 1, but not the number 1, but by like sine of x over sine of x, stuff like that. Um, so, I guess saying pointless is not true. But for now, in this section, in, in these classes, yeah, it's pointless. Um, so let's go ahead and um, rewrite this. It'll be x minus 1, x minus 4 equals 0. We'll set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. So we get x equals to 1 and x equals to 4. I mean, hopefully as we're doing this stuff, you guys are kind of like, yeah, I remember this, I can do this. You know, I, I'm hoping you're not like, I'm totally lost. I don't remember ever seeing this before in my life. Um, I hope that's not the case, all right? Um, but if, if it is, you feel a little lost, hopefully this will help out, okay? Remember, you can always look in Google Classroom in the notes, homework, and video section and uh, find all the notes for everything we've done for, uh, how many days do we have left here? Uh, two, four, six, eight, nine. So for 171 days, all the notes that have been there for 171 days are there, okay? Uh, nine more days, and we finish the 180 for students. Over there. So by the way, seniors, um, final exam start tomorrow. So uh, I know some of you guys uh, may or may not have. I have no idea what your teachers are doing. Um, but if you do, make sure you guys are, are ready. I don't know if your teacher is going to test you uh, only the 23rd, 7th period, or they're like, hey, we're starting. Okay, all of my calculus classes start tomorrow, whether they're juniors or not, or, or seniors or not. They're juniors, seniors, uh, everybody's starting with my calculus class. So, um, all right, so let's move on. Solve this by factor. So it looks pretty easy. I'm not going to say it looks difficult. Um, but it's not in the right format, right? If I'm trying to solve by factoring, I want to make sure I set it equal to zero. So I'm going to move this thing over. So this p squared minus 5p is equal to zero. At that point, I notice I have two terms. So whenever I have two terms, I want to check to see if it's a difference of two squares. But it's not because 5p, I can't write it as something squared. But I can factor out a p value. So this will be p times p minus 5. At that point, I can break it apart, solve each piece. So I can say either p is 0 or p minus 5 is 0. Well, the p equals 0 is already solved, and the p minus 5 becomes p equals to 5. So my two answers are going to be 0 and 5. Like I said, most of this stuff has been pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to move into some weird stuff right now. Okay. Stuff that I'm pretty sure most people don't like. I know that because rational expressions and rational equations are always the least favorite for most people. But that's what we're going to be moving into right now. So before we get into that, any questions on the factoring, the working <laughs> together problems, anything like that? All right. So here we go. So number 16 says solve. Remember to check for extraneous solutions. Now, I don't think you're going to have to do that on your final, the extraneous solutions part. So they're just going to want you to solve. But in order to solve this stuff, <clears throat> you're going to have to get a common denominator. So notice we have a 3x squared. We have an x squared. And we have a 3x. Okay. That's what I have. I have those three denominators. What would be my common denominator? Like from all those three, what should I make them look like that they all kind of have the same thing? A 3x squared. So notice the 3x squared is already set up for me. What do I have to change on the x squared? Times 3, right? So I'm going to put times 3 x squared. I'll put that in a parenthesis. And what do I have to change on the 3x? Just an x, right? So it's 3x times x. So the thing in parentheses is what I'm going to change on the top and bottom 
of that denominator. So notice the 3x squared didn't change, so I'm just going to write 1 over 3x squared. All right, the x squared, I changed it by multiplying by 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3. So 3 over 3x squared plus. And then the last fraction, the 3x, I just had to multiply it by x. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. So it's going to be x over 3x squared. Does anybody remember what I did here for the next step to make this? I took off the bottom. Now, there was a step, right? The step was get my denominator, 3x squared, and multiply it times everything and then cancel everything out. But then I said, hey, let's just do it in a shortcut. We're going to multiply by 3x squared everywhere, which basically means get rid of this. So 1 equals 3 plus x. Now subtract 3. You got your answer. If you check to see if it's extraneous, when you plug it in, does the bottom become 0 for anything? So uh, the bottom of the first fraction would become a 12, so it would be 1 12th, that's fine. The bottom of the second fraction would become a 1 4th, and the last fraction would become a negative 1 6th. None of them become 0 on the bottom, so it's not extraneous. Like I said, on the, on the final exam, you're not going to have to check it, okay? But I'm just showing you guys what they meant by that. So remember, it's important that you get the common denominator, you change it all around, and once all the denominators match, you can just cancel them out and just deal with the numerators only, okay? So these are tougher problems because they do require you to kind of think a little bit more, like what's going on on the bottom, how am I going to change it to make it look the same? So these are sometimes a little tougher for some people. Some people think these are easier. I think these are easier than the other ones, but that's just me. Um, let me write down um, this original equation, but in a different way. 1 over k times k plus 6. Notice I'm factoring. Plus 1 over k plus 6 equals 3 over k times k plus 6. That's what I'd recommend you do is factor it out. Okay. So if I, if I do what I did last time, I'm going to write all the denominators on the side. <coughs> right? I'm just going to write them all to the side and say, okay, what would make, or, or what do I write that would make them all the same? What would be my common denominator? K what? K plus 6. Yeah, K and K plus 6. The way this is written, this would be a good match for this. And this one is just missing what? Just the K. And then I, I make them all the same. So I want them all to be, let me put the K in a parenthesis here because that's going to be the new part. Two out of the three don't have to be changed. Only the middle fraction has to get that K multiplied in. So. My first fraction would be 1 over k times k plus 6. The next fraction, i got to multiply the k to the top and the bottom. So that's going to be k over k times k plus 6. Sorry about the way that looks. And the last one is unchanged, so k times k plus 6. This is why it's useful to factor those, because it's easier to spot what's different. Now that they all match on the bottom, get rid of it. So 1 plus k is equal to 3, so k must be 2. That's my favorite part. Whenever I do these problems, this can be a pain, but it's always nice when you see everything just kind of disappear and it becomes easy. So, Are we okay with those? We've got five more to go. Actually, six. No. I said 22, right? So five. All right. These get a little bit easier, but not really. Like, um, well, this one's not too bad, but when we get to this one uh, and then this one, it, it might get a little trickier. But they're not—they're not terrible. Okay, they just look scary. So this is a complex fraction, or compound, shall I say, fraction? A compound fraction, which means there's a fraction divided by a fraction. So all you want to do. Uh, I think I remember telling you guys, is rewrite it the way you read it. 
right? So I read it x minus 2 over 3x divided by 4, mi 4 over x minus 2. And then remember, we don't divide fractions. We multiply by reciprocals. So this is going to be x minus 2 over 3x times x minus 2 over 4. Then they're going to want you to um, multiply this out. So you can leave it in a couple of different ways. Let me kind of show you. This is one way you can leave it. Okay. I don't recommend distributing the top, but you could also leave it like this. Okay, so either one of these, I'm pretty sure they're not going to make you distribute the top into x squared minus 4x plus 4. So that's just kind of going backwards. Usually when we simplify, I want to try to factor as much as possible. So either one of those is okay. It just depends on which one comes out on the multiple choice options. <clears throat> so I know it looks complicated, but honestly, it's, it's not too bad. Just remember the process, right? You don't divide fractions. You multiply by reciprocals. And then once you do that, just be careful when you multiply. Multiply correctly uh, and combine your terms if necessary. Let's do one more, then we'll check and see how you guys are doing. Now, thankfully, they've told us uh, that you guys no longer have to do addition and subtraction with different um, denominators. So when the denominators are the same, it's easier because the denominators don't change, only the numerators change. So all you have to do with this problem is basically do this. n minus 1 minus, now remember, a negative in the middle forces you to distribute. Don't forget that. There's a reason why I'm doing one of these problems with the minus, because I'm sure there's one in the test. Okay? But that negative is going to make you uh, distribute. So that's going to be minus n minus 3 over 2n minus 3. Now, n minus n is going to cancel, and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, so it's just negative 4 over 2n minus 3. And that's it. I think we have another one like that right now coming up. But again, notice the denominators match, and if the denominators match, that means that we don't have to worry about um, changing anything on the bottom. We don't have to multiply tops and bottoms by anything. It's just... Straight out uh, common denominators, so easier problems. So notice this one looks a lot more complicated, but when you really look at it, the denominator is the same, which means it's not going to be harder to do. It, it's the same like the one we just did. It just looks different. So I am going to, I don't know why that plus is so far to the right side there. If there's a plus in the middle, you do distribute it, but distributing a positive changes nothing. So you can kind of just ignore it. So it's going to be 3x plus 2 plus 5x over 2x squared plus x. Notice the denominator didn't change. Just the numerator. 3x plus 5x, that's 8x plus 2 over... 2x squared plus x. Now, this is a good answer. Another good answer is this right here. <clears throat> Actually, hold on. But there's a reason why I don't write the second one as my main solution. Like, I really don't like this answer, even though uh, it's, it's a correct answer. The only reason why I would factor is if I was going to see that I can cancel something out, right? If I see like, oh, if I factor this and this, then I can cancel here and here, right? But nothing canceled out. So to me, it's a waste of time to write the second answer. So, so I would kind of like, I would kind of just um, do this, like kind of say like, I, I don't want that. Right? Like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave the answer the way it is on the left side. But if you do the right side, that's fine. Just look for whichever one shows up on the multiple choice. Okay? But I'm pretty sure the one on the left is going to show up. I don't think we, we do extra factoring just for fun. Okay? All right. Well, before actually I go to 21, 22, the last ones, I think. Yep. Um, 
Are there any questions from 12 to 20 so far? So hopefully you guys are still kind of like, okay, I do remember this. Now, this is not all the way from the beginning of the school year, just so you know, okay? Second semester only deals with second semester. So um, we're not going all the way back. You, those those uh, first 17 weeks of school, you guys just kind of have to know them by now, right? So we're not practicing that either. Okay, so the last two, these would probably be like uh, the tougher ones. 21, probably a little tougher because it requires an extra step than 22. Um, but they're pretty much identical. Um, whenever we have problems like this, you can see trinomials, you see binomials. That means we're probably going to have to factor. And notice there's a division right there, so I'm going to have to probably flip this over. So here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor while I flip over. So the 2p plus 10, I can take out a 2. And that'll be p plus 5. And then there's a 2 right there. Times, now notice I already realized I'll be able to cancel those 2s out. Okay. When I flip it over, the second fraction, the p plus 2 cannot be factored. So that's just going to be like that. Okay. But the p squared plus 6p plus 5, maybe I can factor that. So if I look at p squared plus 6p plus 5, my a term is a 1, b is a 6, c is a 5. So multiply this out. This will be a 5 and a 6. So what are my two numbers? 1 and 5, right? So plus 1, plus 5. I don't have to divide because a is 1. So my factors are p plus 1, p plus 5. All right. What can I get rid of? The 2s, all right? The p plus 5s. Anything else? What about those p's? No, right? I told you guys, if it's in a parenthesis, you better get rid of all of it. So don't cancel out those P's. So my final answer uh, from everything that's left is P plus 2 over P plus 5. Uh, P plus 1, sorry. Fight the urge to cancel out those P's out. Okay? That's why I remember I told you guys, I keep them in parentheses for a reason. So it reminds me, this is a whole statement. The only way you can get rid of anything in that statement is to get rid of all of it, not just the piece. Okay? Because then if you get rid of those, then your answer is 2, and that answer is not 2. Okay? So uh, just be aware of that. And the last one here, 22. This already has multiplication, so I don't have to flip anything around. So I can now just look and see what can I cancel out. So what can I cancel out? The 2x. All right. So... 2x is, hold on one second, x minus 1, all right, anything else? No. So on the left side, I didn't get rid of everything, so I'm going to have to rewrite it. It's going to look like this. Whereas you'll notice on the previous problem, I didn't rewrite the left side because everything here was gone, like it's, it's completely gone, so I don't need to rewrite it. But over here, I still have that x plus 2 on the bottom. And then on the right side, I have a 3 over nothing. So I'm not going to put 0. I'm going to put 1. So if I multiply that together, I get 3 over x plus 2. And there you go. There's your answer. So that's uh, day 2.